If you're tired of generic, useless outputs from AI, it may not be the AI's fault. I've been there too. I didn't want to get left behind. So I looked at OpenAI's ChatGPT documentation, Anthropic's Claude documentation, and Google's Gemini documentation. Soon my prompts were helping people improve their resumes and land their dream job. In this video, I'll share my learnings and show you six levels of AI prompting so you can take your AI prompts from amateur to pro and get outputs that you can actually use. Let's jump in. Level one, this is where most people start. You ask AI a question and you expect a quick answer. Here's an example. How do I give feedback at work? Here's what it gave me. It's similar to typing your question into a search engine like Google. This level is fine if you want general answers, but it will never give you answers that are tailored to your specific situation. Here's when to use it. When you have simple questions and want quick, raw information, or just want to spark ideas. Here are some example use cases. When you want a quick definition, what is the star format? Second use case, getting a high level overview or summary of something. The prompt could be, summarize the responsibilities of a technical program manager. Another example is using it for initial stages of brainstorming. Give me 10 video ideas about job interviews. Level two, let's say you want your AI output to look or sound a certain way. For example, a table format, a bullet point format, or an email in a professional tone. This is where constraints come in. With constraints, you can limit the structure, length, tone, style, scope, format, and level of detail. Let me give you some quick examples. For structure, it could be giving bullets or a numbered list. For length, it could be keep it under five bullets, or you can say no more than 150 words. For tone, you can say keep it friendly and approachable or professional and clear. Tone constraints tell AI the energy or the vibe that you want to convey. Example of style constraints would be keep the sentences short or use simple language a fifth grader would understand. With scope constraints, we limit what should or should not be included. We can tell AI to give only the pros, not the cons. We can ask it to give us only top three risks of a project. For format, you can also think of it as content type. For example, write this as an email or rewrite this as a LinkedIn post. For level of detail, we limit how deep the answer should go. For example, keep it high level for beginners or make it detailed enough for a technical audience. Without constraints, the AI tries to guess what you want, and we don't want it to do that. We want to reduce a lot of the guessing or the hallucinations. You'll notice that when you add constraints, your outputs will be a lot more useful. Even small tweaks like specifying email format or tone drastically change the usefulness of the results. When should we use this level two of adding constraints? When you know how you want your AI's output to sound and look like. How do we apply this to our feedback example? Here's the prompt with constraints. So I still include, how do I give feedback at work? And then I say to include what to do before, during, and after the conversation. I also say that I want to promote psychological safety and actively foster professional growth. Let's see what it gives us. There's everything before, during, and after the situation. I like it. Level two made your output more useful, but it may still sound generic. Let's fix that. Level three, we start by adding a role. Role means the perspective or the identity that you want AI to take on so it can give you answers from that particular viewpoint. Here are some examples. Act as a senior recruiter. Act as a leadership coach. Act as an experienced editor. Act as a data analyst. Now when answering your questions, AI will take on that specific expertise or viewpoint. In level three, we'll also add the context. What exactly is the context? You're telling AI the situation and who is involved. For example, if you need to send an email, you'll specify who the email is for, the relationship that you have with them, their seniority, your seniority, their expectations, the background of the situation. By adding the role and the context, in addition to the constraints that we added in level two, we've just made AI output more relevant, personal, and specific to our situation. That's because AI now knows who it should act as and what you're trying to achieve. When should we use level three? When the task depends on certain expertise or the audience matters. Here are some examples of use cases. Interview coaching. Act as a seasoned career coach who helps engineers land interviews. Rewrite this interview answer in the star format. So I specified the role and the situation, an engineer trying to land interviews. I also specified the constraint, which is the star format. Number two, resume writing. 
act as a seasoned recruiter at a FANG company, improve my resume to increase my chances of landing job interviews. Technical explanation. Act as a principal software engineer and explain this architecture to non-technical leaders. Let's go back to our feedback example. First, I specify the role. Act as a highly experienced human resource consultant, leadership and communication coach, specializing in advanced workplace communication, performance management, and fostering psychologically safe environments. Now I'm giving it the context, the situation, that I need to give feedback to an engineer on my team who's not performing and has missed the last two deadlines. I also tell it that in the past, this engineer has been very defensive when receiving feedback. So that's the full context. The rest of it is similar where I give it the task, the before, during, and after constraint, and what I wanted to include. And here's what it had given me. So the before, during, and after is still there, but you can see the example is much more specific to exactly what happened, that the last two deadlines were missed. Then AI asked me if I wanted a full word for word script and I said, yes. And then I added another constraint and there it is. How do I set the stage, stating the facts clearly, inviting their perspective, clarifying expectations, co-creating a plan and closing on a positive note. And then I also asked it for a slightly shorter, punchier version. There it is. Level four. First, a quick tangent about LLMs, large language models. They're like a fancy autocomplete. You know when we type out a search in Google and it predicts what we're actually looking for? AI is trying to do a similar pattern recognition, but at a larger scale. It's using a large data set that it's been trained on. In level four, we improve AI's output by giving it an example to help its pattern recognition. We're teaching AI what we want. Even one example can go a long way to improve your output because it can help us better convey our expectations. Let's look at our feedback example. I did add this line, give me a word for word script. And then I added my actual example. Hi X, thank you for taking the time to chat with me. I noticed that you have missed the deadline on your past two project deliverables. The impact is that our project was delayed, which resulted on our customers raising complaints that went up to the CEO. Can you tell me a little bit more about what happened so we can prevent it in the future? Let's see what AI gives us. The preparation steps are still there. For the delivery, it gave me the word for word script. When I started reading this, it's very similar to how I would say it. And then it also has some more tips on delivery techniques and what to do after. Why should we use level four? When you want a specific style, structure, or pattern that you've already defined. In my case, I just taught AI how I speak so it can frame the feedback in a way that still sounds like me. Here are some examples of other use cases. Training AI on your writing style. Here are two LinkedIn posts that I wrote. Use the style patterns from these two to create five new posts about job interviews. Improving your resume bullets. Here are three bullets from my work experience that match my standard. Rewrite the rest of my work experience bullets in this style. If you're finding this video helpful so far, don't forget to smash that like button. Level five, most work tasks repeat. For example, giving status updates, preparing meeting agendas, creating reports, drafting LinkedIn posts. And most of the time, these follow a similar format. If you rely on one-off prompts every time you need to do one of these tasks, then you're wasting time. In level five, we'll ask you how to create a template, structure, or system that we can reuse over and over to save hours in the future. Here are some examples. For a weekly status update, create a reusable template for a weekly status update that includes goals for the week, progress, risks, and ask for support. I want a version that I can copy and reuse every week. Let's see what AI gives us. For a meeting agenda, create a fill in the blank meeting agenda template with sections for goals, discussion times, decisions, and action items. Once the template exists, now we can plug in new data easily. We can create a prompt with everything we just learned in levels one through four, then give it the template that we create in level five to make our outputs even more useful and more importantly, consistent. This will become a system that we can reuse over and over again, like I mentioned earlier. How would this look for the feedback example? I have the role similar to before. I tell it I need to give feedback. Here is where I specified that I want a reusable template for giving constructive feedback. And I still want before, during, and after. 
and the advice must integrate the psychological safety again. This is what it gave me before, during, and after. But I wanted a reusable template, like a fill in the blank template. Luckily, AI read my mind and I said, yes. And it gave me this. Specific examples to reference, observed impact, potential challenges. All this is great. What to do during, how to phrase it, and how to follow up after. This is exactly what I was looking for. When should we use level five? This is when you want to create a system that you can use across many different topics to save you time in the future. For example, you can use that meeting agenda template for meetings about different topics. The template or systems ensure that all critical sections are covered. Here are other examples. Create a template for writing a short LinkedIn post. Include hook, context, insight, and call to action. Resume bullets. Create a resume bullet formula. Include action, method, metric, business value, or outcome. Interview answer template. Include situation, task, action, results, and learning. Level six. This is where it gets interesting. What if you could ask AI to check its work, self-critique, and verify its output? Spoiler alert, we can do this. And it gives us more confidence in the output because we can actually check how it's checking its work. How meta is that? Usually with AI, we get a first draft. Now we'll get a draft that's verified and almost ready to use with minimal edits. This is expert level prompting because now AI checks its own work. It saves us time because it's reviewing its own work, checking its own blind spots, and making adjustments. It also reduces hallucinations. We get cleaner, safer, and more reliable output with fewer errors and fewer assumptions. When to use level six? When accuracy, reliability, and high confidence matters. It's awesome for high impact deliverables. Here are some example use cases. When you're finalizing a resume, you can ask it to check for jargon, weak verbs, missing metrics, and consistency. When you're doing interview prep, you can ask it to evaluate if each story is concise, structured, and aligned with the leadership principles that the company is looking for. When a professional email has real stakes, for example, when it's going to an executive stakeholder, you can ask AI to verify its tone, clarity, and conciseness. Let's use level six for our feedback example. Most of this is similar from before. And then at the end of it, I add, after creating the word by word script, run a self audit. Did anything sound overly formal, biased, or run from too narrow point of view? Is your output actionable? Will I unintentionally exclude or confuse them? Is my messaging clear, direct, and empathic? If you need more information, please flag it and let me know. And here's what it gave me. The before, the during, it's giving me the script. And then it's giving me the after. And here is the magic part, self audit. It tells me that the tone and perspective was warm, human, and supportive. There are specific observation, impacts, next steps, and follow-up. I have avoided any jargon. It invites dialogue and respects their viewpoint. And it's direct and empathic. Then it asked me, do I want a word for word script again? And I said, yes. So here it is. How cool is this? Bonus, keep a prompt library. It can be in notes, Google docs, sheets, notion, or any place where it's easily accessible to you. Don't think of prompts as one and done. Be sure to iterate on them. You can also try the same prompt with different models to see which gives you the best results. Here's a quick recap. Level one is when you give AI a goal, a question, or a task. Use it when you need fast information. Examples include, what is an ATS? Summarize this, list ideas for this. Level two, you add constraints. Use it when the structure matters, when you know what you want the output to sound like or look like. Examples include, rewrite it to be concise, give me a table, limit it to five bullet points. Level three adds role and context. Use it when expertise or audience matters. Examples include act as a recruiter, act as a project manager, act as a career coach. Level four adds in examples for the model to imitate. Use it when you want consistent style based on your examples. Examples include match my writing style or rewrite my resume bullets based on the style of these resume bullets. Level five is about reusable templates or systems that we can use in combination with levels one through four. Use it when you want a repeatable system to save you time for repeatable tasks. Examples include LinkedIn post framework, 
meeting agenda template. Level six is where we ask AI to verify its own work. Use it for high impact deliverables when you need high accuracy, reliability, and confidence. Examples include when creating a final version of your resume or when sending emails to executive stakeholders. Now the big question, do you always need level six? No, think of levels one through six as tools, not a ladder that you must always climb. Level one gives you more speed while level six gives you more control. Use the lowest level that accomplishes your goal. To see some of these learnings in action, check out this video where I share updated resume prompts to help you improve your resume to make it a magnet for recruiters. I wish you the very best, you got this.